good to be saved, first and foremost. Um, but I was just thinking we have been doing um, virtual for over a year. And some people have been joining with us for the entire year for I do want to thank everybody for that. Um, thank God for you to me and thank you for allowing God to use me along with you guys. So um, today we are in week seven of our Humpty Dumpty series. But, um, and so next week will be the last week. But let me tell you about the week following that. Uh, on July 11th, my mom's birthday, July 11th, then we are going to start a new series entitled um, um, Real Housewives of the Bible. It's going to be filled with drama, it's going to be filled with cutthroat, vindictiveness, and pettiness. We are all familiar with the uh, Real Housewives of Atlanta and Beverly Hills and New Jersey and New York, all of them. And we know all the drama and backbiting and hurt and everything that they do with that. And a lot of times people say, I get so caught up into those things because the Bible is boring. I can't read the Bible. It is boring. But we want to show you how um, if we'll take a look at some of those things in the Bible, some of those stories in the Bible, those housewives in the Bible, they are just as exciting, just as drama filled as the real housewives of wherever we, we, we look at, Atlanta, um, everything else. So um, it's going to be, again, it's going to be filled with a lot of, a lot of drama, a lot of pettiness, a lot of... Um, Chess moves here and there, and one person trying to outdo each other, and, and just just everything. So again, it started on the 11th of July. Next week we will uh, conclude this series with Demas, and after that we'll start the series uh, Real Housewives of the Bible. <coughs> so today we're going to take a look at Abraham, the fall of Abraham, Smith. Up. Um, he is the father of faith. Um, he is the man that Christianity and Judaism and even Islam descended from. So um, God, he was he was a man of tremendous faith. Um, that's why he's referred to by, uh, the, um, as the, the uh, father of faith. God told him, leave your people, leave your country, leave your people, and go. I'll, I'm not telling you where, where to go now. I just need you to leave. Um, and Abraham left, not knowing where he was going. God, I tell you, I tell you later. You just go. He got up and he and he left. God told him, "I need you to take the life of your son, sacrifice your son." And he took his son, his only son at the time, up onto uh, onto the mountain and, and drew back a knife. He was a man of tremendous faith, um, and God even said that he was justified. He was he was made righteous through his faith. However, Abraham didn't start, he, he didn't start out full of faith. He didn't start out the way that he, that he actually ended up. So, let me just ask you this question. And answer me if you will. Uh, name a time that you felt that it was necessary to lie. <laughs> or give me a time that you feel, maybe you haven't done it. Maybe nobody here has lied. But maybe give that time that you feel that a lie is best. When you get a whooping. So when you get what? So so you get caught up doing something you shouldn't do. So you think lying is best or that's the time you feel like you should lie? Which one of those? You feel like you're best, or that's the time that you lie to that? Okay. Isn't that there? I feel like a lie is best at that moment. Or it's okay to lie during those times. Isn't that there? <laughs> So if you feel like it's best to lie? 
ดูเลยฮะอยากรู้ไหมไม่เนื้อส่วนเด็ดดิสิสิลายแอร์ฟูเซติโนก็จะเนี่ยว่าMary gave Lots us a lot of emojis. The yeah. thumb down, the and the smirk, and then this. She's <laughs> confused. She's very confused. So this was not clearly. This was not one thing. One a thing that Abraham did one time. 
he told, look, he told me to be like, everywhere we go, this is what, this is what we do. I told her that I'm to tell him that you are my sister. Um, um, and so the thing that caused him to slip up, um, that caused him to fall, had called, called him to fall before. And the truth about life, the truth about Christianity is that most of the time when we get caught up on one thing, we don't, on something, we don't get caught up one time. The things that cause us to fall, Mr. Jimmy, they don't cause us to fall one time. Right. We, we, it, it happens over and over again. Um, um, it's, it, it's basically those things that show up, uh, mess us up, we get caught again over and over again. And most of us got that, most of us got that, that something, that something that, that, that kind of gets messed up, that, Let's let's call it our our it or our thing. It's something about that thing that kind of that we're weak for that kind of messes us up time and time again. See, a lot of times when it comes to us, we don't fall to just everything. Everything come up, come along. We don't just get messed up. You know, we don't just get caught up in some of everything. But we all got that one thing. We all got that it that we that we're weak for because he, he, here is the thing. The enemy, the enemy tests us early on to see what we are weak for, to see what we gravitate to, to see what we latch on to. And he and, and, and he afflicts us with things. He, he studies us to see um, what we're going to, what's going to cause us to mess up so he can pinpoint our area of weakness. And most of us, when, when, we, when we mess up, we mess up with that same thing. Listen, Mr. Jimmy, when somebody, when, when you, when, some people ain't gonna say, uh, Rodney did what? No, what they're gonna say is Rodney did that again? That because the things that we get caught up in, we get caught up in the in the in the and the devil is not going to he get that thing that we are uh, that we're getting caught up in, that we fall to, that we slip to, the devil is not gonna stop using it until it stops working. He is not gonna. He's not gonna try and come up with new, with new things, with new plans, with new tricks. As long as the old trick is still working. So if he's not introducing new enticements and new traps in our life, that is an indication that the old trap is still working. That is an indication that the old trap is still effective. That they're still tripping us up and they're still messing messing us up. Um, that same one, that same person, Kelly, gets on our nerves. We're saying we're weak for the same type of joke, uh, the same type of things elicit fear in us or, or, or they frighten us. The same thing makes us doubt or the same thing makes us makes us angry. The same thing, uh, the same thing makes us fall at work typically is the same thing. The same subject makes elicits fear within us or, or it, it, it's problematic for us or it is some issue. The same thing turn us on or the same things mess us up over and over again. And the question that we have to ask ourselves is how long am I going to fall for it? How long am I going to fall to it? When am I going to grow up? When am I going to change my perspective? When am I going to uh, to, to, to develop, uh, to be able to shift my perspective or to, to come up with something to deal, to, to handle my, 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 my actions and, and my reactions? God asked the children of Israel, how, he said, you've been, in, you've been in this place long enough. It's time to get up. You've been here long enough. We've been, you've been stuck long enough. You've been vulnerable long enough. You've been easy prey long enough. It's time for us to to get up and to, to do something about that. Here, this is the season for um, us to break that cycle. Because what, what happens is when we continue to do the same thing over and over and over, then it becomes easy for that thing to become a habit. And, and habits become easy. Um, it's easy for habits to become addiction. It's easy for addictions to become, to become lifestyle. And before we know it, then not only will I be doing that stuff, then it will, I will become that. It will become the thing that I'm known for. You are not so not so much that you lie, but you are the liar. 
You are the drunk. Right. You are the addict. You are the cheater. You are the sinner. It becomes a part of me and becomes what I am known for. And Pastor was saying on Wednesday, we have to connect with God and come up with a plan together with God and stick to that plan so that we don't keep on falling to the same thing over and over. We're making the, we're making the, the devil's job easy. He don't have to come up with anything new because the old stuff is still is still messing us up. It's still avoiding all the stuff that's in our life. It's still tripping us, us up over and over again. Um, thoughts, questions with that issue? Everybody good? So, let me just answer this question. How many feel that there are some things that we do, we just talked about the, the last, but there are some things that we do that are insignificant. They, we know that they aren't necessarily the right, but um, we feel like when we do them, there's no big deal, no harm. They don't, they don't hurt anybody. back. You know I feel like that? You do? Any, any specific things? You know what? <laughs> she was like, leave the on that one. But there are some things she said, like, oh, they ain't wrong, but I ain't hurt nobody. I just said a thing that you did. <laughs> Maybe some other people do. But you feel like there's no, there's no harm or some stuff. Anybody else got any, anything you feel like that? Eventually, Kelly is coming back. 
I mean, eventually, and I may not have to deal with it today. I may not have to deal with it tomorrow. I may not have to deal with it next week, next month. But sooner or later, that thing that I do, that thing that I say, those things that I plan my life, eventually they're going to come back up and I'm going to have to handle them. I'm going to have to deal with them. And, and sometimes they are a, a lot rougher to deal with um, than, than I really want to do it. Sometimes they come up and I have to handle them at the most inconvenient time. Sometimes when everything I put together is, is, is set in place, and I remember that the, the enemy sends that thing, or, or God allows that thing that I planted in my disobedience or in my um, or in my impatience, he allowed that thing to come back up, and I actually have to deal with it. And here is my warning. We must stop taking sin for granted. I don't care how small it seems. I don't care how it seems to not harm anybody. We must stop taking sin for granted. We can't toy with, 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 with our salvation or our relationship with God. There's nothing to play with. There are consequences for it. Um, and this, um, this little lie that Abraham told, it was not so much about the lie, but it was about it demonstrated a lack of faith. Uh, God had told him, I am El Shaddai. I am God Almighty. Nothing can stand before me. Nothing. Uh, I am the sufficient, the all sufficient one. I'm more than enough. Why do you feel like, if, and if I am that in your life, why do you feel like you have to sing and to survive? Why do you feel like you have to tell a lie in order, in order to make it? So this is more than about a little lie. This is about why did you do, why, this is about why did you do what you did? Why did you do the thing that made you, um, what, what's going on the inside of you to make you feel like you have to do those, those little things? What caused you to have to lie? It's always in our life, it's all, when we see, feel like something is insignificant, it always is behind, be, be, beneath that thing is an, is, is an issue. Beneath that little thing that we do, there is a big thing that causes us to do it. There's, there's something on the inside. It's not why. It's not that you lied, but why did you lie? What was what, what it that, 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 that made you feel like you had to lie? Not that you. It's not so much the issue, just that you cheated. But what what was going on? What's going on? Not with the other person. Not within your marriage, but what's going on with you that made you that made you unhappy and instant feel like that what God has already blessed you with was insignificant. That was that, that was not enough. Not so much that you treated um, the that you're talking nasty to a waiter, but what is it about you? What is going on inside of you that makes you feel like it's okay to disrespect God's people? Not so much the, that I'm cursing, but what's happening on the inside of you that makes you feel like that the, the, the most powerful gift that God gives us, which is our words, that you can contaminate that with profanity. It's always something behind our, something behind the little things that we do when we take it for granted all the time and make it feel like it's insignificant. We have to, uh, we have to understand that it's not insignificant. There's a reason that we do what we do. And there, there's no level of sin. If even, even though I see it as insignificant and I see it as, as not harming anybody, that's not the truth. It always affects somebody. And there's always a reason why I feel like it's okay to go against the word of God. And that is the real issue. If God has said don't do it, then I have to make sure that I trust God enough um, to do what God said, even when I feel like it is, it is no big issue. I have to identify it, and I have to fix it, because eventually I'm going to have to answer for it. Um, and Abraham, here is the big thing about Abraham. Although he failed and he messed up, he was able to resurface. Not, but here, here with Abraham, he didn't just resurface after he fall, after his fall. He Abraham messed up again and again and again. God told him leave. He he messed up. The thing I love about Abraham is that he kept messing up and God kept using him. His faith was not like a stable faith. God told him that he would have faith and then he would fall. He would, he would have to take another stand of faith, and then he would fall again. He would take another stand of faith, and he would fall again. And even in the midst of that, God kept using him. God said, listen, leave your country and, uh, and, and go. And Abraham did. 
That was that was the faith. But then God said, "Give away to your people." But He took Lot with him. That was a, that was the fall. So he, he would fall after his sin. And just because I am great at one point in my life doesn't mean that tomorrow I will struggle. Just because I got it together today doesn't mean that tomorrow something will not hit me. Uh, something will not happen to shake the very foundation of, of my faith. Things are, are going to come back up. Um, and, and God is not concerned. Here because God is not concerned with what I did or how great I was on yesterday or how much I failed on yesterday. God is concerned with how many times will you get up after your fall? But God can still give. God can use people who have been, who have fallen into a cycle of sin. People who have been great and failed, and then are willing, still willing to get back up to ignore what people think about them, um, just because they were on the top, or ignore how people, how people um, just ignore their pride and get away from what people are uh, concerned about, and focus on just what God is concerned about. How does God see not what people? What people think about me after after falling, but what does God think about me after resurfacing? What a, how does God look at me? How, will God still use me? Am I willing to get back up? It doesn't matter. Understand, it does not matter how many times I fall. It just matters how many times I get up. If I fall eight times, as long as I get up nine, I'm good. As long as I get up one more, the number of times that I get up is one more than the number of times I fall, I'm, I'm still I'm still on top. I can fall a hundred times, all I got to do is get up one a hundred more. Even after I fall um, time and time again, God still uses me. There is still an assignment with my name on it. I can't think that just because I get caught up in this and I mess up time and time again, that God is going to get tired of that. God just wants me to, to, to stand, when I fall, God just wants me to stand long enough in between my falls, long enough for him to pour into me so that eventually when I stand, I don't fall again. Uh, but but even when I do fall, because understand, I have fallen, but we uh, another fall is going to come. Another mess up in our life is going to come. And God just wants me to be able to use me in the meantime. So even when that, my, my, the question is, what do you have next? What's next in my life? Um, what, what's left? Will you still be usable when you do fall the next time? Because the next fall is going to, to happen. Am I still willing to allow God to use me the, the next time? We will keep falling over and over again. As long as I keep getting up, over and over again, God still has plans for me. God can still use me. God can still make me great on the a great again on the same level of greatness that I was before. Peter failed time and time again, but he still was usable by God. Um, and, and just because I fall, don't mean that God uses me less. God still will use me more on the same level and will have to allow me to achieve an even greater level of greatness. My, my, my challenge, Mr. Paul, is, is, is not to stop. That's not to stay down once I fall. I don't care how many times I fall. God's issue is, what about tomorrow? What will, will you allow me to use you tomorrow after the fall again? Because, I, because tomorrow, I see Still have work for you. Mark tomorrow, there are still assignments with your name on. Will you will you stay to the challenge again, or will you allow your last fall to dictate your next day? Let's pray. Kind fathers, can come up just to say thank you. We bring you the glory, honor, and praise, God. We thank you for your grace. We thank you for your goodness, God. We thank you for your um, willingness to use us over and over again. We are we repeat that time and time again for messing up and for being weak. But we ask right now, God, for you to continue to strengthen us and continue to use us, God. Bless right now, God, so we can break the cycle of sin so that we don't continue to get caught up into the, into the same thing over and over again. But God, we give you glory. And even if you do, God, even in the process of doing it, God, you will do bless us and you will you bless us. God, you are out here today. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen.